Our next guest is Greg Schleter. Greg has been a past guest of our Spirit Drive over the years, and we're always glad to be able to connect up with him and find out what he's got going on right now. And Greg, I want to welcome you to our 2021 Spring Spirit Drive. Thank you. Good morning on this blustery winter April morning. This is not a scene that I had ever expected I'd ever see (laughs) uh, on a spirit drive looking out the window here. Yeah, we've got a beautiful white tree that greeted us eight years ago when we arrived to this area. And it it just the blossoms were just majestic. And it was right around this time. Kind of had that Tolkien-esque, you know, like in the Lord of the Rings, the white, the white tree, if you recall, that just sort of symbolized life. And so the buds are just about ready to come out. And I have to say I'm a little conflicted because um, the snow coming down and on the trees when I went running this morning with the, the sunlight coming out, there is a beauty about it all. And I have to say there's maybe something spiritual here in that there's an admixture of sort of the cold and winter that's still nipping at us with a breaking forth of light, you know, in the, uh, shall we say, the day after the events of yesterday, Chauvin, which sort of pronounced, right, a tumult that we have experienced throughout the world. And I have to just say to all those who are listening right now, whatever you're experiencing, maybe this is the, the place you're in, sort of a mix of, of winter and dark and cold with light. And where else are you going to hear somebody say, God is sovereign. God is over it all. He sees what's going on. He sees what's happening in your marriage and your family. And uh, he wants us just to trust in him. He wants us to believe in him. And I encourage you to partner. I just have to get that out also, since we missed probably the first 10 minutes with whatever technical details are where I see the little thermometer on your website. You know, let's get that baby going. Let's get the temperature rising, folks, whatever amount that you're called to give, $100, $100,000. Hey, if you hit the lottery, we'll do that. We'll receive that, right? On a monthly basis, we can do that. Partner with this capacity to communicate God's love, to communicate his sovereignty. That's my strong message this morning. Yeah, and it is it is a great message. I, I it's sort of prescient in a sense that you know I got that thermometer on our website for the first time ever, and of course it's low because our temperatures are low right now, right? <laughs> but we need to warm yeah. that up without a doubt. Absolutely, yeah. So, I, are you wanting me to uh, give you kind of an update? Has it been a year since we spoke? It, 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 we last spoke with you in October. And okay. Yeah, and, and yeah. Obviously, give us a give us a, a background of what you've got going what you've got going on now. Yeah. And what your plans are? Thank you. So, just for anybody who aren't familiar, we have been. Uh, my name is Greg. Of course, my wife Stephanie. We have a full time marriage and family revival ministry. Um, we are just about recognizing our identity as sons and daughters of God in Jesus Christ. To image the Trinity, though, that's what it's all about. Image the Trinity. It's the heart of of everything. It's the cornerstone of civilization. John Paul II said the future of humanity passes by way of the family. I bet if we did a survey of all of those who were instruments of malaise, of tumult over the last year, and in some degrees, let's face it, it's all of us, it can all be traced, I think, to an absence of encountering that love in marriage and family. We all fall short. I get that. So we're about rediscovering, reawakening, Ephesians 5, 14, awaken, O sleeper, rise from your death, let Christ's light shine upon you. We're yearning for that intimacy with God. It's what we were made for. And in this world, as Catholics, we know it's mediated, it's made present to us, to human and material instrumentality in our families. And the families come under attack. Fatima, we hear the messages, and Akita, just many of these recent revelations have spoken, and and dating back, that the, the heart of the attack of the enemy is going to be on the family. Why? Because God gives us the family to make him who is love, God who is love known. So we're about experiencing that, helping families recognize that vision. You know, what does it look like in a home where dad and mom are working or kids are going to school and all the struggles? You know, how is that a custom designed retreat? That's the big thing. Most of your listeners have probably experienced a, a very meaningful spiritual event, a Crescio chirp. Maybe they've been to Ignite, some of our events. Wonderful. Well, the challenge is, how do we take that and make that culture our home culture? That's where I think we fall short, but where people are really in need of taking that reality, that encounter on that weekend, and saying, how do we adapt that, that culture, that atmosphere in our home, that we can be, if you will, an image of the Trinity, the way we love each other, the way we live it out, dealing with the struggles, that everything we do can be an occasion of worship. Worship literally means to give worth. How do we foster a worship mindset? So that's what we're about, and folks can find out more at ilovemyfamily.us. 
um, I'll say a new thing among many things. We have a, a weekly gathering guide um, that's been going for eight years. Folks can get on. It's free. It basically corresponds to subsequent Sunday readings. So the step one is any of you who are listening, you know, if you're saying, man, you know, we've got the digital thing that's robbing us. Pixels are robbing us of people. We all struggle with that. Got it. Well, the challenge might be find a time this week, half hour, 40 minutes, you know, trust me on this. If you set aside the time, you're going to want to, it'll go longer than you ever expected. And it'll be the most meaningful time you expected. So you're going to set aside some time. Download our Live It Gathering Guide. It begins with some really fun, engaging questions. You read the gospel. It has some questions to guide you through that. It has some sharing questions, what's a victory, what's a challenge. It really opens up, if you will, the corridor, if you will, that frequency of connection that um, with these people that we surround all day long, but so that we're not just bumping into each other, kind of like ships passing in the night, but open up the treasure, right? Open up the treasure of, of the infinity of God alive in the soul. Are we, are we even willing to discover that in one another? So when people do that, and, and really hundreds of families have done this and do this in a regular way, they talk about the vitality, how it takes the profession of faith to a whole new level. So the Mass, we know, some have struggled with that, with COVID and everything else, with the sacraments, but that grace is in there. This is an occasion to live community, not just to partake of Holy Communion, but to live Holy Community. So that's kind of what we're, uh, you know, it's the heart of our mission. And one of the things we're really wanting to do, and if any are listening in your parishes and you're looking for like a, a vibrant Holy Hour, if you want to reconnect with this theme of, of this love relationship with the Father, and it played out in marriage and family, Steph and I are, are willing to go around and do a very meaningful um, <clears throat> prayerful holy hour in parishes that would involve praise and worship, involve some reflection, particularly on Matthew 7, and ideally being in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Yeah, I definitely would offer uh, anyone listening who's in any, of the, in any of the parishes in our listening area to please consider that. I mean, there, there's lots of different things that we can do, but sometimes coming together in community in a meaningful worship sort of way together as a family. In fact, you know, in fact, in our parish before the pandemic, we had what we called a deep on fire sort of event. Mm. Okay. And that's where we encouraged uh, families to come as well as elder parishioners to come to a, uh, to a holy hour where we had some contemporary, you know, music and along with the, some of the sacred music, the traditional stuff, all the incense and all that. I mean, I was, I presided at that as a deacon to be able to make, to Beautiful. offer that. And we had the burning bush. People brought candles up. It was a great event. We had a meal afterwards and, uh, we got a lot of really good feedback on that. And so I encourage folks to consider having an event like that because it can really energize some families and community in a way that, uh, we typically don't do, and really nowadays we need to start getting back to. I mean, absolutely, because you know we've been apart for far, far too long. Absolutely. So we we have what we speak of Jesus as real presence. He's truly present to us, and I don't even think we can fathom right what our senses fail to fathom as the great Saint Thomas prayer that we sing. You know, um, let us sing with one, let us breathe with one accord. Um, I think right now. Anybody who are listening, are we not yearning for more than just physical presence, but spiritual presence? And um, and the enemy wants to attack that, so he causes distance. Do we not see social distance? Do we not see the last year, year and a half? It's really an attack on relationships. It's an attack on the experience of God alive. And so what what is a simple thing we can do to recover the joy, the, the grace, the healing, the transforming uh, thing that happens in the presence of God with one another is to enter into his presence. So certainly the Holy Mass, if you haven't been to Mass in a while, brothers and sisters, if you've become kind of content with watching on the screen um, with the dispensation, you know, respond. Because I, I think those, I know, let me just say, I've been on good, good knowledge that uh, things are going to be opening up here pretty soon again. And we need to reacclimate the way we think about um, the world around us. Many of us, I think, are maybe laboring under a shadow of distance, you know, there's a languishing. All the studies reveal kind of the despair that is, has set in for a lot of folks by this distancing. You know, there's the culture of fear. So together right now, and this is the beauty of this radio station, right, is it's been able to reach into living rooms, cars, wherever people are at, to be a message of hope, a message of life, a message of connectivity. But we got to respond to this grace and actually get together, especially in a sacramental context, um, and make that happen. So, 
you know, I, I just, I do want to encourage all of you who are out there. Um, and I want to kind of throw a, a challenge out there is, um, which of us don't face trepidation, face inertia, things that stand in the way. We have habits of, that keep us from getting together in our own homes. We have habits that keep us from going to uh, church. Right now, some of you, you're fearful financially of what your finances may be. Well, it's precisely facing that that is an occasion to be God's presence, to be His grace. And right now, I'm going to say that we as a family, we're single income, we're a ministry family, we depend upon benefaction also. But I am moved to offer $50. I want to donate to the station, but I want to ask for 10 other people to join me. If you're in the same place right now, if you're out there and listening to me right now and you're thinking, ah, oh, you know, I'm giving to this and that, I'm, I'm worried, I'm concerned, and um, I want to ask you to take the step and trust and see how God's going to bless it. I want you to call in right now and you guys can throw down the numbers and whatever else. I want you to call right now and join me and make this more than just a donation. Join me in prayer. Join me in an act of faith to say, Lord, you are bigger. You are overall. You see my circumstances. You see my situation. I trust in you. Join me right now in donating $50 to the station that this message can continue that God is with us. You can do that right now at 888-287-055. That's 888-287-0655. We have multiple phone lines open to take your call right now. Take up this challenge that Greg has offered here. $50 donation, 10 people. That's all we need. 888-287-0655. That's the phone number to call. You can also go to our website, holyfamilyradio.fm. That's holyfamilyradio.fm. That's Great. awesome. Thank you, Greg. That's that's wonderful. We appreciate that challenge and, and that plea to our listeners. Can you tell us a, a little bit more about ways that um, you and you, your ministry, you and your wife, um, I- encourage and support uh, holy families and, and growing in the faith uh, within the family unit? Yeah, thank you. So I think number one is simply to keep in front of people our identity. Uh, John Paul II and others have said the core battle is one over identity. It's knowing who we are. And as one who was very steeped in multimedia, uh, I managed marketing help for Disney's Narnia, Superman Returns, God of the Girl, a number of, of projects, programs. Um, I recognize that even commercial advertising gets this. They try to uh, associate our identity with a brand or a product. So number one, I think, is the constant proclamation that we are sons and daughters of God. We are fashion of the Trinity, that family literally I'm throwing a lot of words in this, but we're iconic. We see icon- iconography, right? Well, the family is a living iconography of the Trinity. So we want to make that accessible. And so how do we do that? Well, we have a radio program ourselves on Ignite. We call it Ignite Radio Live. It's uh, Annunciation Radio and tremendous reverberation on our podcast beyond that. And what do we do there? Well, we, we really connect with many other families who share the stories of God alive in their marriage and family. We've had um, multiple episode seasons that we call Family Road Trip Podcast, a ton of fun. Basically, we find, you know, at times four families who commit to seven weeks of, of doing this live it gathering guide on a weekly basis. And so every week we touch base with them in sort of a reality esque way. And how's it going? Can you tell us a story of what's happening in your homes? And those stories um, are truly remarkable because all of these families that they have in common is they're all like committed Catholic families. Like they come in as families that um, go to mass in a committed way. Many pray the rosaries, et cetera. Um, but the one thing missing is this beautiful theme that Pope Benedict punctuates so much in his Jesus and Nazareth trilogy, that it's about the relationship at the heart of ritual. We as Catholics, we have such a rich tradition that we can become kind of ritual, you know, uh, we can have sort of a ritual, ritual sufficiency. You know, I'm good. I go to Mass and we pray before meals and whatever, but the culture, right, the frequency under the home is not one of relationship. And I, I believe everyone who's listening to me right now knows what I'm talking about, desires it, but probably didn't inherit from our parents what that looks like or how to do it. But I'm just going to say it's a game changer. And so this Live It Gathering Guide um, is an occasion to do that together on a weekly basis to be relationally connected with the gospel, with the church based upon the Sunday readings. And then when we gather, say, an, as an example for that radio program, and they share you know, hey, our kids, as we, uh, part of this gathering guide, you know, we apologize to one another. 
um, that alone has overflown into everyday life where my little two-year-old did something says, I'm sorry, or whatever. It becomes kind of this, you know, um, great uh, gift of our faith to get rid of debris that stands in the way of grace, without which, think about this, how many of us right now have some issues with a sibling or a cousin or a parent? Arguably, it's probably from began with a one singular event or other events that just accumulated that were never atoned for. We never apologized. We never forgave. Maybe we didn't tell them you hurt me. So to parents, what if right now you fostered in your home a culture of apology and forgiveness? That alone would eliminate so much stuff, so much crap, so much junk that allows that grace to flow. So five years, 10 years, 20 years later, there's not this cool distance that the enemy is kind of weaponizing and spinning and causing distance. Instead, again, back to this thing of distance presence, we become or we step into real presence again. We step into becoming a kind of a holy community again, flowing from that holy communion. So that's one of the examples. Um, We do three-night parish missions, which are really awesome. They kind of, uh, I share this quite often, and you know, when you share something a lot, you kind of get fatigued with it, but it is still very powerful that uh, every movie, every story ever told has these basic four movements. If you're thinking, whatever, Lion King, my daughter's in that musical, so I have that comes to mind. Lord of the Rings, Lassie Comes Home, Sound of Music, Gladiator, whatever your movie is, think about your movie. They all have these four basic movements. It begins at one point, no big, that's not a big surprise. You have protagonists that begin somewhere. Movement B is they go through a crucible. They go through a difficult time that moves them out into movement C. They more fully discover their identity who they are, which flows into what movement for their mission. So let's give some words to these life. They begin somewhere. They go through crucible death. They discover their identity resurrection. And that flows into mission Pentecost life, death, resurrection, Pentecost, whether you're agnostic, atheist, Buddhist, Muslim, Hobbit, whatever you are, all of these movements are woven into the, into human experience and every story ever told. So what are the verbs between those life, death, resurrection, Pentecost, the verbs literally describing Christ's life, the verbs are empty. So that Philippians two are emptied of the junk of the stuff through the crucible so that we can what be filled with God's grace to overflow. So I'm going to suggest that where many in the, in the Catholic community today have struggled is we get maybe the empty, and we struggle with that even, as I talked about the apology and forgiveness. We can do that better, but we tend to get that. So we can be filled. We come to the table. We receive the Eucharist. We get the sacraments, right? And we can do that more also, right? Really receive it. But often where we stop short is, am I aware that I've been blessed? I've been filled. I'm blessed to be a blesser that it has to, it doesn't end with me. And in fact, as Jesus says, if, if we don't use what he's given us, even what he's given us will be taken away. So back to the retreat or the parish missions, our parish missions are three night parish missions that focus on each of those themes, empty, fill and overflow. And each night it's a very powerful story meets message and ends before the blessed sacrament with this powerful night of kind of weaves together meaningful worship with silence in a traditional way before the Eucharist. And I'll say every time we've done this, every place we've done this, it has ignited a spark. It has awakened hearts and minds to our nature in Christ that he's He's imminent, he's transcendent, but he's imminent in us, that the way we're wired is to be literally image of God. And then following that, this is the cool thing about our our three-night missions, is that it doesn't end there. We offer this then livid gathering guide that's a continuation for all who experience that to recognize that we are the ultimate participants in an ultimate drama starring us, that we're not just spectators that draw us to these movies and spend so much time and money, but we are literally with a host of heavenly angels and saints looking upon us. We are participants in an ultimate drama that continues through all eternity. You got me monologuing again. Hey, you're so good at that. <laughs> well, you know, we like to give ourselves a little break. We get ourselves some really great guests who. You got some coffee. Yeah. It's great. You had a couple, had dinner, breakfast, yeah. lunch. Yeah, absolutely. And we're back with you. <laughs> hey, 888 287 0655. 888 287 0655. We're talking to Greg Schleeder, massimpact.us. I love my family, all that, Image Trinity. And, you know, you, you, you talk about this, this common story that we all, share that's all kind of ingrained in us so and that that makes sense that makes connection so there's a couple of, of problems though i see number one is are 
you're doing what you can to communicate that story to people. How can we also do that? How can we tap into that? And number two, right now our culture is showing us, I think, the exact opposite of that, or at least the idea that we can define ourselves and make ourselves into who we think we are. Mm. Talk about that a little Mm. bit. Yeah, right on. Um, So if I were to distill the enemy's lies, and there are many of them, many facets of the lies that that speak to us all, we see it in the press, we see it in the news, I would summarize it as such. Satan whispers to us that truth is something we can presume to create instead of someone in whom we are created. We see this play out in the culture wars and battles and the level of identity again with gender at the very core of that. Why? Because gender, Genesis 127, in his image, he made them male and female. We are selfies of God. God made us. The family is a selfie. And so Satan is going to go after gender. He's going to go after sexuality. He's going to go after all of that. And um, so, you know, I, I, I think, number one, there's a hierarchy, and I think this is such a key thing. Read screw tape letters if you want to have an insight as to how Satan whispers to us, to good people. But anyways, I think um, the hierarchy, if I'm not personally connecting with God at the highest level, my most fundamental commitment, I'm not going to have the capacity to the second level to give to my wife. And then if I'm not giving to my wife, the third level, I'm not going to have the capacity to give to my children. And then if, if not that, I'm not going to have the capacity to give to the world. So what we have among very good people is maybe a disregard for even God, that daily prayer time, right? That cultivation, that awareness of his presence that fills us up. Um, and by the way, I would say if we're not authentically evangelizing, it's probably a good indication that we ourselves have not been evangelized. Like, if it's not burning in our hearts, if we don't, like, experience this love of God, and it's more than just feelings and emotions, but in our character, if we don't know who we are and and are not connected to Christ, it's not going to overflow to others. And so, you know, um, obviously, if that that is happening, then I have what God has made me to be to give to my wife, selflessly, Ephesians 5, uh, which is what? You know, we hear this word, you know, wives, submit to your husbands. But what does that mean? Literally, under the mission of. Wives be under the mission. And the problem wives don't want to be under the mission is because they see a whole lot of men who don't have a mission. They don't know their mission. And what is that mission? Paul goes on to say, you know, Christ lays down his life for his church. Lay down your life for your wife. That is my mission, to be Christ to my wife and family. So if I'm connected to Christ, I can have that mission laying down my life as Christ does for his church, for my wife and kids. And then it overflows into our children, right? They, they absorb that culture. They absorb that purpose. And it's not just this book on the shelf with 30 other books. You know, faith is woven into everything they do. I love that when I say brag, you know, until our kids meet their maker, we're going to be fasting and praying. But, um, I am so blessed. Stephanie and I are so blessed at the fact that they own their faith now that they're entering into adulthood and the decisions that they're making and the influencers that they're becoming and their writing and their music, Joseph's, you know, Damascus worship, uh, which is reverberating really now throughout the country and uh, is getting a lot of attention from Damascus down in the center of the state. He founded this and just a powerful uh, Catholic worship stuff, John Paul at Hillsdale. Um, just doing great things, Catherine, Grace, Dominic, each one of them in their own rights. And, and what do I call that? It's, it's, it's a way that they're worshiping God. It's not an arrow pointing towards themselves. And we may struggle with that. I'm not downplaying that. But they, they get at the heart of this, of this culture, is a call to live the mission of Christ alive in them with the unique gifts that he's given them. I mean, how many people right now who maybe go to mass, maybe pray the rosary, but are, are distanced from a sense of their purpose and mission. Like they're in that play, right? They're in that, that movie, they're in that drama, but they don't know it. They don't know their role. They don't know what they're about. And then of course the world languishes because in that level, the fourth level, that's meant to radiate to those around us to demonstrate the difference. I mean, if you were in a, you know, I don't know, an office setting that was a secular a company, you know, would people be able to identify somebody as a Christian distinct from others? I mean, this is a challenging question. I mean, how many people have worked with somebody side by side for years only by some fluke to discover that one of the people was a, a, a weekly mass goer or their faith? Well, it kind of tells us right now that the deeper pandemic, the deeper crisis, you know, are we attuned to God's love for us at the closest, at that highest rung, filtering down to, again, marriage, family, world. So 
you know, if you will, as a movement, we are really at the service of the truth Christ revealed. We want to live it ourselves personally. We want to invite others to join us, right? We want to invite others to encourage them, to support them, and kind of that heart tactic. There's kind of five levels. I won't go into all of them, but at the heart of it is this live it gathering guide to break through the inertia uh, of our time. Because let's face it, our discretionary time and our checkbooks reveal what we really worship. You want to know what really matters to somebody, you look at their checkbook with their discretionary money. What do they spend it on? And that's why, again, right now, folks, just encourage you to give to Holy Family Radio. I mean, it's just a great way of grace. But also with our time, you know, where do we spend our discretionary time? How much is spent? We, we're told six, seven, eight hours a day per person on our digital media. Versus what? Versus making that time to come together as family, to pray, to encounter God. I'm monologuing again. But we love the monologue. It's fantastic. And <laughs> that's, that's why we do this sort of thing, because it, it encourages and inspires and excites uh, n- not just us, but more importantly, the listeners. Um, so it, it's just so important. And, and I want to reiterate, um, your, your website is massimpact.us, right? Yes, but I would direct, I would direct, and this is part of my problem. I'll leave that. Pray for me, all folks. I just have too many spinning wheels. But the focal point is marriage and family, and so I'd say go to I love my family dot us. It's kind of a proclamation, then also with the site, and it really directs you to the core mission, and that's a place of unity, right? That's free. Everything is free. And it's a great step to see our families come alive in the power of identity in the Holy Trinity. I love my family dot us. Yep. That's very helpful. We're talking with Greg Schleter, and uh, this is your Holy Family Radio Spring Spirit Drive. We ask you to give us a call at 888-287-0655, and pledge your support to uh, this radio station, your Catholic radio station, so we can continue to bring you all the quality programming you've become so accustomed to. So, Greg, what else do you have going on? Oh, my goodness. Um you know, I would say the last year has been informative for us to really be attuned and, and responsive to the heart of God with many families that find themselves at home with the struggles who I think are hungry in ways they've never been before. And um, and so we're really trying to inside out like Christ form the 12. So we have a solid core group of families who we really want to spend dedicated time that they can be disciple, family disciple makers. And then, um, uh, you know, a key thing of that, of course, is opportunities like these parish missions. We have two-hour missions also. Um, anywhere we can go, we will go to hopefully help pastors awaken their parishioners all the more fully to their identity and mission. That's a key thing. There is another thing here, and that is before the George Floyd took place last year, I had a very strong vision of people going into public places, our metro parks, just to be God's presence to be uh, whoever may come by, just to let the Lord lead us. I mean, who can't say, hey, my name's Greg, nice to meet you, what can I pray for you? That simple. Well, that translated into a pretty significant movement, um, prayerplace.us, you can find out more at, but it united a number of predominantly evangelicals who were like, wait, Catholics love Jesus? Like Catholics, like worship? You guys are like, like get out of your shells and do this? Um, it, it really was remarkable. We had 13 different events, public events, and the stories are really remarkable. We tell a lot of them. We shared them on our radio program. We captured a lot through video. Um, it just really, honestly, with all the negativity that surrounded us, again, before George Floyd, this happened, uh, it was when the, the vision came about and then continued through the summer. It was just such a unifying factor to discover the common heart of Christ in humanity, across denominations, across ideologies, across politics. People were united and praying over one another and listening to one another. And, uh, you know, a lot of these folks just, like, they met people in the park, the team met people in the park and continue to this day to minister to them and with them. Uh, the healings that took place, physical healings, miraculous physical healings, of course, a lot of emotional healings. The ultimate healing is, of course, relationship with Jesus. But what I love about that is it was kind of... um that overflow movement that I spoke about. It's that kind of get uncomfortable. We don't grow if we don't stretch. We don't stretch if we don't get uncomfortable. And it was one of those opportunities to say to the public, to say to Catholics in particular, because evangelicals are more comfortable doing this, like, hey, get out of the comfort zone. Join us on the Friday night. You'll see the flags at, say, Swan Creek Metro Park. You're going to hear the music playing. Just come and be present and experience that. 
it does something when we avail ourselves to God's grace, make ourselves uncomfortable, and it strengthens us. So I really pray and hope that that can actually this summer even become even more of a movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That that sounds that sounds great. I tell you what, you've got a lot going on. You have a lot of energy, a lot of passion that uh, I hope others find infectious and, and contagious in a, in a in a good sense, right? And <laughs> talk about stuff these Thank days, you. you know. Yeah, a, a good infection, not a uh, <laughs> pandemic infection. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm 53, so I got to use it while I have it. And maybe there's a message there, too. You know, as my kids are getting older and, you know, making little jokes about senility and all that, that passage in Scripture, you know, when your dad loses his mind and I get these little elbows in my gut. It's cute. But it is true, folks. As you're listening, God gives us resources and time for a limited period of time. And uh, we have such an opportunity right now to make a difference. So I want to throw it back at you guys and say, all who are listening right now, you know, I'm going to contribute $50. And I'm going to ask all who are listening, whatever is within your means, God gave you that resource. He gave you that blessing. Discover how much he wants to bless you all the more by calling in, making it happen. Partner with Holy Family Radio. Support them. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate that. 888-287-0655-888-287-0655. Zero six five five. Well, Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. Sorry we got started a little late, but I tell you, uh, it definitely has been a fruitful time for me. I think it's been fruitful for others who are listening as well. Any parting words you'd like to give to us besides you know all the help you've already given? Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much for what you guys are doing in your faithfulness. And I, I do just pray that all recognize partnership isn't the word we just throw out there. You really are wanting people to share in the heart of Christ through the mission that you started. And I just leave the word, the blessing upon all of us to just be mindful that God is sovereign. He's overall, whatever circumstance any of you are going through on this day in this moment, we just pray for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. To who, he appoints us and that to which he appoints us, he anoints us. So have confidence in that, live in it, breathe in it, walk in it, and uh, let it shine forth. Amen. Mm, Beautiful final thoughts. Thank you so much for your time, Greg. We greatly appreciate it. 